Okay, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be connecting to our Docker server using our Docker Unity SDK. To do that, we're going to create a new object in our empty scene here. So we're going to create an empty object. I'm going to give it a name of Nakama Connection. And I'm also going to right click in our assets here and create a new C Sharp script. We're also going to call that Nakama Connection. And then I'm simply going to drag and drop this onto our Nakama Connection game object and open the script in Visual Studio Code. Okay, we're gonna get rid of the update function. We don't need that. And I'm also gonna get rid of this comment. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some variables. We're gonna have a private string, and this is gonna be the scheme. And the scheme can take two values. It can either be HTTP or HTTPS, depending on whether or not your server is running using SSL or not SSL. In our instance, since we're using a local server, we're not using SSL. So the scheme here is simply going to be HTTP. Our next variable is going to be the host. So we're going to have a private string called host. And this is the host name or the IP address of the server that you're trying to connect to. We could type here 127.0.0.1, which is the IP address of our local machine. Or we could also just type localhost. The next thing we want is the port number. So we're going to have a private integer and this is going to be called port. And the port number for this is 7350. Now you might be wondering how you know that if you come over to your Docker compose file and scroll down here to the bottom, you can see there's a health check. And this is actually calling the Nakama server to ensure that the server is still running. And you can see here that it's connecting over HTTP the host name is localhost and the port number here just after the colon is 7350. And this is also one of the ports that we exposed using the Docker compose file. So let's come back here. So we've got our port at 7350. And then finally, we want to pass in the server key, which is like the server's password. This makes sure that no erroneous clients are trying to connect to our server. And it means that we can specify a password on there and only our client will be able to connect to it. In this instance, we didn't actually specify a key, so it still has the default value. So let's say server key equals, oops, server key equals, and the default value is just default key, all lowercase. And we know that by going to the documentation here for Heroic Labs, the Docker quick start. This is where we got our Docker compose file. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see connecting the Nakama client, and it has all of the default values if you used Docker. So we have our host name here, which is 127001 or local host. We have our port at 7350. We have SSL as false, which means we're using the HTTP scheme. And the server key here is default key. Okay, so let's go back into our script here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use these variables to connect to our instance of Nakama. To do that, we're going to need to create a new variable here, and it's an instance of an I client. Now, you'll notice that I client isn't coming up with any auto completion here, and that's because we need a new using statement at the top of our script. So let's type using Nakama. And now, if we hover over this I client, you'll see that it's an interface of the Nakama.i client variety. We're just going to call this client for now. And then in our start script here, this is where we're going to create a new instance of that client. So let's say client equals new client. And we can open our brackets here and we can see that there's four different options for this constructor. We can pass in just the server key. We can pass in a server key and a HTTP adapter. We can pass in the string, a host, a port and a server key. Or we can pass in all of the above, including the HTTP adapter. We're going to use this last one just because it offers the most flexibility. And for this, we're going to pass in the scheme, host, port, and server key. So let's type scheme, host, port, and our server key. And we also want to pass in a HTTP adapter. Now we're going to use one that is built in here. So we're going to use the unity web request adapter dot instance. And you'll see if you hover over this, that it comes with the Nakama SDK itself. So you don't need to write this. This is already in the SDK. And let's end our line here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this client to connect to the Nakama server and create what's called a session. To do that, we're going to call 
the client dot authenticate device async function. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. One is that this is an asynchronous method. So that means that we need our function here to be an asynchronous function. We can do that by typing async at the start of the line here. And we can type await at the start of this line, which makes sure that we are waiting for this command to finish before we move on to the next line of code. The other thing to notice is if we look at the method here, it's called authenticate device async. Now this is a form of authentication that is built into Nakama that allows you to create a user account for the user based on their device's unique identifier. So you can see here that we can pass in a string for the device ID, and we can also pass in an optional username, but we're not gonna do that in this instance. We're simply going to pass in the device's unique ID. Now there's a simple way to get that in Unity. We're gonna type system info dot device unique identifier. Okay, so now we are authenticating our device. You can also see if we hover over this, that this actually returns an I session variable. So let's change this line here so that we're not just awaiting it, but we're actually assigning the response to a variable called session. So we're gonna say var session equals await client authenticate device async, and then we're gonna pass in our system's unique device identifier. What we'll also do is we'll actually bring this session variable up to the top level so that we can use it later down the line. So let's say private i session session, and we'll simply get rid of the var declaration there. Okay, so now we have a Nakama client. We also have authenticated our client using the device's unique identifier, and we've stored the response in an i session variable. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open a socket. Now, a socket is something that allows us to send and receive messages from the Nakama server. So we're going to create another variable up here. This is going to be a private i socket. Again, let's just call it socket. And just below the session, we're going to say socket equals client dot new socket. We don't have to pass anything into that. That's basically just going to create us a brand new connection. And the next thing we need to do is we need to connect that socket. So we're going to say await socket dot connect async. And this wants us to pass in the session. So the authenticated session. And we can pass in some various options here, such as whether or not we're going to appear online and the connection timeout option. It's fine to leave the connection timeout option at 30. However, for the appear online one, we're just gonna specify that as true. Okay, so if this is all ran correctly, we're just gonna debug.log our session, and we're also gonna debug.log our socket. Okay, let's save that. Let's go back into Unity and making sure that we have our instance of our Nakama server running, which I currently don't. So let's open up our Windows terminal. Let's browse into our Nakama folder, which we set up previously. And let's run our docker compose up command here. Okay, and now our Nakama server is up and running. We're just gonna press the play button here in Unity. And you can see here that it's printed out the value of session. So if we just make this a little bit bigger, we can see that we have an authentication token. We can see that it says it's created an account. It's got the creation time, the expiry time, and it's also created a random username and user ID for us as well, which is great. And then you can see here that we have our socket, which is printed out. It's got our base URL, which is our local host 7350. And you can also see that the is connected value is true. So we are now connected to our Nakama server. If we come back into our Nakama server console here, you can also see a log entry, which says new WebSocket session connected. And it's got the user's ID there and also the session ID. So now we're connected to our Nakama server. In the next video, I'm gonna take you through how we did this in Fish Game, which is a slightly more advanced and more fleshed out production ready version of the same code that you've just seen. So I'll see you in the next video.